hopeful in some ways, and then, and then in other ways, some of you are going, oh, think of all the things I need to get done for the winter holiday this weekend. So this is a good time before we do this last little piece of, of cognitive work to just do some being. So let's all just settle in for a moment, finding that sort of comfortable place. And supporting your limbs, having your body either supported or nicely tall in your chair, sort of like the mountain can be tall and self-sufficient, like the tree can be tall and self-sufficient. And just bring your attention to your breath, however it is at this moment. And at this moment, just being present with the breath. It's almost more being with than watching the breath. Being one with the breath. And if the breath is at all ragged or jangly, it's really fine to go into that more um, calming mode, which is a slightly deeper in-breath and a slightly longer out-breath. If you count on your in-breath, then count one and a half times on the out-breath. So let's say four on the in-breath. Then you can count six on the out-breath, just lengthening it a bit. Tuck that away. You can try that later. Just breathing right now. Preparing for our last little bit of um, alternative ways of responding rather than reacting. And we're breathing, knowing that we are breathing. And then just gradually stretching a bit, moving that spine side to side, back and forth a little bit, just giving that body a little massage. Okay. So I'm sure some of you heard me saying to Carolyn that I think I tried to do too much and I usually do. So just realize you don't have to take these whole bites every morning that we're together. Just take a little bit that feels right for you um, that day. And in that vein, I want to go to the first slide for Friday, which on my book is, um, oh, lovely. Oh, Carolyn, that's very pretty. Yes, beautiful. Oh, the lotus is so pretty. What a nice surprise. So if you're just saying, gee, I can't remember what she's telling me, then I would like for you to just put this little mm, saying or mantra or whatever into your mind. Thich Han, 
who is, was a lifelong uh, meditator and priest, um, said, talked about, we do this really in parts. That first, when we start our little mini practice or our formal practice, we are simply stopping, stopping. And if we can stop long enough and breathe long enough, we'll begin to calm. And then likely we'll start to feel refreshed. And usually after most of that is when the healing comes and the healing in, in my mind, in relationship to what we're doing this week, the healing is being able to notice when we're about to be reactive and to step back with our breath and to actually choose a response. Now, mind you, we don't always choose the best response. This is practice. This is practice, but at least we start once in a while and then a little more often to notice we're about to be reactive, to say something that's hurtful, to um, do something that's hurtful, send an email that's hurtful, and suddenly we go, let me breathe with this. Mm, no, let's don't do this. So that's the small bits of work we do as we start to transform. And as we do that, you know, even once to catch ourselves, we begin to feel um, empowered. We begin to have the sense that we actually uh, don't have control over the outside, but that we have some able ability to direct our inside. And it's a very wonderful and uh, calming and restful feeling. So just know that this path is a very gradual path and it doesn't always seem that we're moving forward or upward. Sometimes it feels like we're taking two steps back or that we're walking in a circle. That's just how the work on self is. And believe me, you who are here with me today are doing more precise and focused work on yourself than many folks have ever considered doing and how wonderful that is for us. So what we're gonna do today with the next slide is just talk about what happens, what happens when we are able to step back from the reaction and choose a different action that actually because we chose it is a response. It's a, it's a mindful response. The first thing I'm going to suggest is something I've been encouraging you do, to do with yourself all week. And that is simply notice the sensations in your body and see if you can't name um, the emotion. Sometimes we can't name whether we're frightened or angry because those things often kind of bounce back and forth. But we can say, gee, I'm feeling agitated or I'm feeling anxious, which is a slightly more mm, global word. And if we say that to ourselves, it's powerful. If we choose to say it out loud in a situation, when the situation uh, interpersonally is difficult, it is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Then let me talk right now, even though it's on the next slide, we'll come back to it. What happens when we speak an I phrase in the middle of a, of a stressful situation is that it automatically takes us and, and I say automatically, but it takes us and usually the other person 
out of that midbrain, very reactive uh, place up into our, um, our higher brain centers, up to where we can problem solve, where we can be discerning. Um, and just the process of recognizing it can take us from one part of brain activity, which is a more primitive part, to a, uh, a more planful and kind part of, of our brain. So, you know, I don't know if you've ever done that, but when, once we speak that out loud, gee, I'm feeling anxious right now. Um, I usually get less anxious. And there is almost always a clear change in the other person that I'm talking about. So that's really just a wonderful uh, way to act within the situation to calm it, both yourself and the other person. Another thing that we can do is we can use a joining phrase. And I wrote a couple of them. Wow, I'm pretty frustrated right now, and I bet you are too. Or this has been a really difficult project for both of us. So find a, a phrase that will encompass both of you and speak it. Now, these will have to be your phrases, but just keep in mind a phrase that would, would fit for you. Moving on to, and these are in no particular order. Sometimes there's enough distress in ourselves or enough uncertainty about what is a good response that the best thing to do is to say nothing at all. But if you can change your body posture, you may notice that you're all doubled up and closed in as you're looking at another person or that you um, that you're even using gestures that are uh, off-putting so see if what you might do is change your facial expression a little bit and it might be um, some folks say even if you take your hands in some form of um, Oh, uh, prayer might be the word some of us will use, but in, in move your hands in some way that is that will convey uh, understanding. It might be uh, with your hands. I don't know. I didn't see my screen, whether you can see me, but you might just kind of put your hands in front of you. Or it might be in your lap that you put your hands down with the palms open which is a, is a very non-threatening way to be. So sometimes it's just uh, change your body posture and then just be quiet. A couple of other slight variations on the theme are acknowledge out loud that you are disagreeing and that you're really at an impasse. You might say, we really seem stuck, don't we? One of my favorites, if I've been sort of going back and forth with someone is, I believe I really see this situation differently than you do. Trying not to be um, adversarial, just acknowledging the fact. And finally, Sometimes it's very useful if, if you can find that phrase. And sometimes I have practiced phrases that I sort of tuck in the back of my mind that might be useful to pull out in a sort of stressful situation. Um, we seem to get off on the wrong foot when we try to do this. I'd really like for us to find a better way. And you know, these activities work just as well or better with children 
than they do with adults. When, when we let go of our um, parental or authoritarian stance for just a moment and just sort of join with a child and say, oh, we're not doing so well, are we? That often really draws them in to be willing to work together to be different. Okay, so all of that um, was a big chunk. But if you can go in and pick out a couple of the types of responses that seem better for you and um, tailor the phrases to what you would say, not necessarily what I would say, and tuck them back. Tuck them back in, in the back of your mind for um, those moments when things are difficult. And of course, if you have a sense that you're going into a difficult situation. Now, mind you, you don't wanna write the whole fiction novel about how bad it's gonna be, but if, you've had difficulty before uh, with this person or with this project, then just breathe right before you go in and breathe as you're listening to the other person so that you can stay very hooked with your body and with the present moment. So, Okay, that's rather big. And we only do this work a bit at a time. What I'd like to do is have a little bit longer uh, sitting at the end here today. So mm, let's just go to this final slide. Uh, oh, no, we have one more slide before the final slide. Let's go on. Down one, yes. And this was what I was um, referencing earlier, that if you make a more objective response in a situation, um, what happens is um, the other person will probably shift too. Uh, Just remember that we have moved from that fight, flight, faint, or freeze point, which is very primitive. We've moved to a place um, that is more planful and more discerning. The other thing I'd like for you to just think about here, or maybe not think about, but just experience, is that, you know, my husband at one point was asked how I was different when I came home from my first long silent retreat, it was 10 days. Uh, uh, and people said, well, how's Harriet different? David, how is Harriet different? And he said, well, her sense of humor has improved, which is so exciting. So just notice that when you begin to be non-judgmental with yourself, you start to be non-judgmental with other people and you just don't take yourself and everybody else so seriously. Oh, there I go being critical again. Yeah, that's just my old self. That's just, that's just someplace I go sometimes. Nothing big, no big deal. A thought that you will let go of a feeling that you will let go of. And so when you lighten up, everybody around you is gonna lighten up too. So now we move to the next um, slide for just my last sort of admonition. Do you have the patience to wait till your mud settles and the water is clear? Can you remain unmoving till the right action arises by itself? 
patience with ourselves and others goes a long way. So let's just leave that slide up and let all that sort of get in the pot and simmer all that verbiage I've been throwing at you this morning. And let's just let it be in the pot and bring our focus primarily now back to our body and to the breath. And you will likely see thoughts flitting through or feelings and just notice them and let them go. Bringing your mind and your attention back to the in-breath. and the out-breath. Knowing that the anchor of the breath is always with you. So in confusion or distress, just focus on the entire in-breath and the entire out-breath. Just noticing where your mind is right now. And if necessary, bring it back gently and firmly to the breath. Minds do wander. And every time you come back to the breath, it's a lovely new beginning. Pat yourself on the back and say, oh, I'm back.
And as we get close to the end of this sitting, take a moment to give yourself an aspiration for these coming several weeks as we um, move through uh, the winter holidays in the midst of joy with families, in the midst of anxiety about illness, in the midst of responsibilities at work and with, uh, with our private lives. Maybe the aspiration is that you will sit for at least five minutes every day just sitting and breathing. Maybe the aspiration is that you'll continue your mini practice with a couple of the cues that you identified in your day. The refrigerator door, booting the computer, sitting at the stop. And maybe your aspiration is simply, if you notice judgmental thoughts, either of others or of yourselves, just be gentle and go, oh, there I go. It's a very normal human response. I can just let go of that. And then give yourself just several nice, deep and long cleansing breaths. And together as a small group, let's do three deeper cleansing breaths together. Inhale, and slow exhale, one. Inhale deeply and slow exhale, two. And inhale and a nice long exhale, three. And everything has its beginning, middle and ending. And so this is the ending of our time together in this way. I wish you all well. And I really appreciated being invited to spend time with you. Thank you very much. <laughs>